Hey everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to our Roach Grandmaster in Hero League. Finishing off our placement games here and this is game 6 out of 10. We're up 4-1 at the moment. Unfortunately guys, I play absolutely abysmally in this game. Really, really badly. Uh, just to let you know a little bit in advance for this draft, I will be playing Sergeant Hammer. Um... I won't play her very well though. If you want to see me playing a good Sergeant Hammer game, you can check out one of the other placement games. I'm sure I have a link somewhere here on the video so you can see some good Sergeant Hammer play, uh, gameplay there. What I want to do in this instead then is to focus on... Um, basically because the gameplay is pretty awful i want to well you'll enjoy seeing the enemy team because they're kind of like just destroy me personally <laughs> it's really bad but uh, i want to really focus then on giving you guys some really good tips and strategies and talking about that sort of thing uh to kind of make up for that in this video so it's going to be a different sort of um different sort of uh, ranked video in this particular one anyway as you can see i was just sort of showing you guys the, the heroes that are strong in this map this braxis hold out the new map um basically what you're looking for is heroes that can really hold their own in a 1v1 uh, heroes that can wave clear well, that can control a point. For example, Rexar, who's normally not chosen in most team comps or in most maps, you can definitely prioritize Rexar pretty highly here on this particular map, and he can be incredibly strong. Uh, specialists, most of them are very strong. The, the strong wave clear and one on one ones like uh, Zagara, Sergeant Hammer, they're all considered to be very, very powerful. Um, yeah, but anyone kind of like that is what you're looking for. Medivh actually kind of works as well. Uh, but yeah, right, before we talk about the enemy team, what they're doing with the, the particular drafts right here, um, <laughs> I was in a super negative mindset going into play this game. I was not in the mood to play Heroes of the Storm at all. You're going to see this in my gameplay and in here how I am. Um, it was unfortunately, it was just one of those things that... I needed to make one of these videos, right? It's the YouTube schedule became an issue because I hadn't done one of these videos in a long time. Uh, and I wanted to get the, the rank stuff done and ready so I can get back to doing the viewer replay stuff. I've been busy doing the PTR stuff. I've been back playing World of Warcraft and I had a busy week. I saw the doctor, I saw the dentist. Crazy busy week. I was doing like a few little jobs as well. And yeah, I just, I kind of fallen behind a bit in my schedule. And I said, oh shit, I need to sit down and actually play this today even though I was really angry and really grumpy. Um, and literally, the second that dude Landfield said that in chat, I was, boom, I was gone. I was 100% tilted. Like, that's how negative my mindset was, that the second someone said something stupid, I was just gone. Um, he kind of combined the two things that normally, normally get me annoyed, but the way I would describe it was that my mindset in this game was like being, um, in fact, he's gonna do a third thing here that's gonna annoy me. Um, but uh, my mindset here in this game, you can see I'm saying, pick Muradin, please, pick Muradin. Maybe Johanna, but mostly Muradin. You could also potentially pick an uh, or even Rexar could work for these two picks right here. You really want, uh, I'll talk about your team comps. This is going to be a big focus and uh, the difference between tanks and bruisers uh, in this game, uh, which you're seeing go horribly wrong right here. And I'm like, no, don't pick that. But yeah, he did the three things that really annoy me. Um, number one, I hate... That tri the ellipses, which is like three full stops in a row, dot, dot, dot. It's just passive aggressive bullshit. It's so weak and annoying. Oh, it just gets me, man. That shit drives me nuts. I'm like, just fucking say it and if you're pissed off, like, just say it. Just be upfront. Don't do this passive aggressive nonsense, you know? Oh, just have some balls. That's what I feel about that. But it, that can really annoy me. Um, or, um, yeah, he's like, why Sergeant Hammer? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, it's mad. Like, dude. Oh. But uh, first and second point, obviously, then, is the Sergeant Hammer. Sergeant Hammer's really good on this map. She's really, really good. Uh, she's got pretty good zone control with her mines and everything. Uh, her damage is fantastic. She's one of the top range damage dealers at the moment. And uh, her wave clear is fantastic, right? And she does a lot of damage. She's really good at defending against those Zerg Swarms. Really, really good. Not going to see a good Sergeant Hammer gameplay here, unfortunately. But just trust me when I say that she's pretty damn good on this map. Um, so that's two things that annoy me. And then he picked the Haka, and so that pissed me off even more. I was like, dude, okay, first of all, you're going to be passive aggressive. Second of all, you're going to criticize me on a pick that's actually good. And then third of all, you fucking hypocrite, you got to pick something that's awful yourself. I was just so annoyed by that. But anyway, to talk about that, 
and why the Dehaka pick's actually uh, pretty bad here. I like Dehaka as a hero. I do. I like him as a hero. And I think he does have a place. The problem is that he's really, really niche. He's really, really niche. Oh, actually, before I talk about that, I can also say, I'm wondering uh, if someone can let me know, if someone knows. But uh, there's like three Smurfs on the enemy team. Um, one of the dudes, Meow X. Um, I was chatting to him after. He's actually uh, a big uh, fan of the, the show right here, of the channel. So that was cool. <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. He sent me a message. He's like, oh, dude, I'm a big fan. That was great playing against you. And I was just like, I hate you. I hate you. You just like made me look awful this game. You ruined my rank series. Um, so I had a bit of a laugh over that. There's this kind of shock silence for about a minute and chat. And then he replied just, sorry. Um, so I wasn't actually mad if he's watching. Uh, I was just winding him up, doing a bit of a troll. I guess you guys don't know that I can like troll quite a lot sometimes when I'm in the mood. For example, like when this dude was uh, basically flaming me for pick and hammer, I like just threw in a bit of trolling, a bit of humor, try to cheer him up. This is a pretty bad play right here. I take way too much damage for really very little value, so that's pretty bad. But anyway, uh, basically you can just take it for granted that nearly everything I do in this game, from positioning to skill shot usage to failing to juke everything, everything I do is bad. Okay, let's just let's just get that out of the way. I know I want to say that play this game good. Um, which I'm curious, this Fury Hots guy, I know that um, he seems to be pretty damn good. And uh, there, he is a smurf. In fact, the Meow X, uh, Fury Hots, and uh, then the other guy who we can't see, a uh, nice MMR mate. They're all like smurfs. They're not proper accounts. So I don't know exactly, but I think he might be the pro player from the United States, maybe playing in Europe, but I could be wrong about that. Potentially someone has just taken his name, but like the player for the like top team at the moment uh, in the States, one of them is Fury. That's pretty bad for me. I don't know if that's him or not. I'm not sure. We'll also bump into several of these guys over the next few placement games, because I played them all today, uh, or yesterday it was. I'm recording the commentary today, so watch out for that. Uh, but yeah, it might be. Certainly the tracer Tastar combo is pretty brutal. Um, it's a very powerful combo. It really gets so much more value out of Tracer. That's one of the tough things for me was trying to p think of um, what sort of ranged hero would be able to deal with it. I think Sergeant Hammer is actually pretty good against Tracer on her own. I don't think she's very good though against the Tracer Tastar because Tracer bursts her down before Sergeant Hammer can... Just about the time the Sergeant Hammer busts through the Tracer shield. Uh, the Tastar shield on the Tracer, so you miss out on a lot of value. I'm not sure exactly what ranged hero would be good against that combo. If anyone can think of one that would work really well, that'd be kind of helpful. Uh, I think Thrall's probably decent against it, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I think you might just have to accept that it's pretty good against you, <laughs> no matter what. I don't know. But anyway, as you can see, we're getting pretty stomped right here. Story of this game. But, uh... Let's talk about bruisers and tanks, because that's one of the big things I want to cover in this particular video. The difference between bruisers and tanks. That's not a scientific uh, definition by any means. It's not a scientific definition. It's a pretty vague definition. Um, but essentially, when you're looking at how to make a team comp, we're going to go by the Korean meta as defined by MVP Black, who are probably the best team in the entire world and have arguably been the best team if the second best or the best team in the world for the last year or so. They've kind of defined the meta. And basically, you're always going to have a support, like a main healer support, right? So not a, very rarely a solo support Tastar or Tyrande because they can't really do it. Um, but you know what I mean. You're pretty familiar with that and having a solo healer support. Someone that can fully heal up your team. Going to be pretty standard. You're going to have a ranged damage dealer. Pretty much always want one range damage dealer because it's incredibly important to have uh, that sort of consistent range damage. You're also going to have a flex player, which would be. Um, I'm trying to think of how best to explain these team comps. Which I'm kind of pausing here. You have a flex player, and the flex player will often do things. For example, at MVP Black, it's the player who plays things like Abathur or Sylvanas, or sometimes they'll pick up a second uh, range damage dealer like Falstad or Kael'thas or something like that. The flex is it's pretty flexible, but typically they play the most often. They'd be the ones playing the specialists, that sort of thing. Um, they oh they also play Tastar as well. They play like the second support. They'll play the second range damage, or they'll play a specialist, something along those lines. Then you're also going to have a main tank and a sub tank. Sub tank is a fake roll, but uh, the main tank essentially is usually it's nearly always. If you look at the games at the moment, it's pretty much always you know Muradin, etc, Material, 
Um, if they're all taken, they can't get one of them. Maybe Johanna. And then if for some reason all of those are taken, you know, maybe Arthas or something like that. It's very limited. And basically the role of the main tank is it's kind of zone control in the fight, initiating a fight, uh, locking down the enemy team with crowd control, creating zones, uh, zoning off the back line, that sort of thing. Uh, as you can see by all of those heroes, they're all very tanky. Uh, they're all quite mobile as well. They all have pretty low damage, but they have a lot of... Um, bring a lot of crowd control to kind of make up for it. Um, on top of that, then, uh, you have the sub-tank role. And the sub-tank role, this will normally be either a second warrior or a bruiser. And a bruiser is a warrior that doesn't bring that level of control that uh, a main tank does. But uh, they bring more damage, effectively. Uh, and certainly some heroes can be built more to be a bruiser than a main tank. Um, I'd say a good example of a bruiser would be Sonya, okay? So Sonya is a very good bruiser. You don't really draft Sonya as your solo warrior, as your main tank. Why not? Because she's too squishy. She doesn't bring enough control to be a main tank. She's just not very good at it. At least not as good as the other heroes. And that's the important thing here. It's not as good as the other heroes. Um, it also bring a lot of melee assassins. So melee assassins are very popular as the sort of sub-tank quote-unquote role at the moment. Uh, so things like Kerrigan, Illidan, uh, Thrall, very good example. Uh, anyone like that, they're all going to be popular picks for that sub-tank type role. Uh, even with MVP Black, they actually run Medivh in this role as well sometimes, which is pretty interesting. I think they're the only team at the moment that does something like that. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. So you've got one range damage dealer at least, you've got a support, you have your main tank, who's, you know, bringing a lot of CC and control. You've got a sub-tanker or melee assassin, and then you got your flex player. They do something like a specialist or a range damage dealer. Now, we kind of have that, right? We've got Oriel as a support. We've got myself as a sort of the flex role. We've got uh, Falstad as the main uh, da range damage dealer. And then we've got Thrall as the sub-tank, the melee assassin, right? The role that we're missing is a main tank, and it's going to be very important. It's actually incredibly important to our, our particular team comp right here that we have a main tank. Instead, he's picked Dahaka. Um, now, Dahaka is a bruiser. He's a sub-tank. Dahaka is not a main tank, especially not against the enemy team comp. I mean, just look at the enemy team comp. What does Dahaka do against a tracer? All right, as opposed to what Muradin could do. Muradin can land a storm bolt. Uh, he can create a zone with a thunderclap. He can also do jump on top of something like the Li Ming. He can just dwarf toss on top of her and do stuff. You can see I'm really salty about this particular game, and I'm just going to be really nasty to this guy. But yeah, Dahaka can't do that. Like, literally, Li Ming and Tracer... He can never get to them, right? Tra like, Tracer just blinks away. Hey, cool. Dahaka completely neutralized. Li Ming just teleports away. Hey, cool. Dahaka's completely neutralized. Dahaka can't land his tongue. He can't land any of his damage. He can't do anything. Uh, he literally is just walking around the team fight, and he just gets walked around. Everyone just walks around him. They run circles around him. I think Dahaka has got a really cool place as a bruiser. I think he could actually be very good on this map in that bruiser slot. So that's, for example, if we um, if we picked up a Muradin and then we picked up a Dahaka instead of a Thrall, I would have said, okay, cool. I actually really like this team composition. This is actually really nice. Um, this could work pretty well. I appreciate the fact that Dahaka has the global for this map. He's got really, really good wave clear. Uh, and... Yeah, it would be a nice little strong front line there. Instead, because he's picked it into the main tank role, we've got this awfully weak front line. The enemy da team damage dealers can literally run around him. Like, literally no one is scared of this Dahaka. No one is scared of this Dahaka. Like, he might catch the Muradin, I guess. It's the main target he can grab. But, like, the, the Tassadar, the Li Ming, and the, uh, the Tracer, no fear whatsoever. Tyrande has some fear, but Tyrande can literally just run, walk away. Like, that's that's how you counter the hacker. You just walk away when he's the main tank. <laughs> you know, just don't walk in his face. And hey, suddenly he can't catch you. Um, so yeah, it's put us in a really rough spot. And uh, yeah, I mean, just compare like the stuff that the Murden is able to do in this game to how the Dahaka is able to do. I'd also encourage you to watch some of my other videos. For example, the ninth placement game, I've already recorded it. I'm playing Johanna in that game, uh, but you're gonna see that it's basically playing the main tank role. I think I did a really good job in that game of playing the main tank role. You're gonna get to see that sort of an action. Uh, I've played ETC, I've played Tyrael as well in this series, so you're gonna get to see that. I have a Muradin video which is up recently as well, so you're gonna, there's plenty of stuff on the, the channel to see that main tank role sort of happening. Um, 
But yeah, it, it's it's so important to be able to do that. I think you can compare that the impact of Dehak in these team fights, the impact of Murden. This Murden is doing so well and setting up his team so well. Dehak is really not able to do that for us, and I'm sure he's a very good player. In fact, I think he's probably a better player than I am. To be fair to him. Um, but he just doesn't understand how the hacker works in the drafts. Like, I, I checked out his profile because I was curious. And this is important as well. And some people don't like that I do this, but I think it's very important to check out other people's profiles. Like, when you're trying to work out what went wrong in a game, and, like, check out the profiles and kind of see, like, okay, cool. Because it's important to work out uh, what you could have done better in the game or where things went wrong. Like, for example, if you're your main warrior or something, and this happened in one of our games last season, I think it's a really good example. We had this Sonya that was just awful in our games. I kind of go, like, why is this Sonya so bad? Why did we lose so badly? Or did we play badly? And kind of checked it out. And the dude had like a 40% win rate on warriors, a 38% win rate on Sonya. And we went, all right, cool. That's clearly a big problem is that one of our players who's supposed to be really strong in our team, he's got a really high MMR. He's actually really bad at warriors, and especially this one in particular. And uh, picking her up. Uh, made us do really badly. So I checked out the hacker anyway, and he's actually, he's, his MMR is higher than mine, uh, historically. Like, he, he should be a better player. The problem is that he doesn't understand the meta at the moment. But uh, yeah, this is also another thing here uh, that might annoy some people. I, like, I'm, not, I'm kind of expecting to get a fair few dislikes on this particular video. But I think this is very important, right? And this is, this is the way I am, is that, you know, he was kind of a jerk to me in the draft. I threw in a bit of humor. I was like, all right, I'm going to pick her because of boobs. You know, just trying to be a bit lighthearted and be nice. It's the second time now he's being an asshole to me. Once that happens, like, you know, once someone kind of just confirms they're being an asshole, I'm not going to be nice, you know. Or some people might say, I'll just be the bigger man and ignore it. I say, fuck that. You know, if someone just keeps saying, if someone keeps being an asshole, I'll be twice the asshole to them. That's essentially how I deal with it. If someone tries to bully me, I'll be twice the asshole to them. And that's just my attitude to dealing with this sort of stuff. Yeah. So, like, he's, he's basically like, thanks for the free lose. I'm just going to say, go fuck yourself, right? <laughs> and this is what I've done in all these online games. Or if someone is being, like, a... Someone's being a real jerk to one of my friends I'm playing with. Or even to just a teammate I'm playing with. I'm going to be, I, you know... I'll just be like, well, fuck off, dude. I'll call them out on the things that they're doing wrong. Uh, but certainly, this guy does not know how to draft a hacker well. Also, this was really interesting. I, this map is asymmetrical. I was like, where the fuck? Where, where is the frickin' Hall of Storms? I was like, shit! I thought I was at the top left. Oh, God. Now the enemy team is between me and the Hall of Storms. Right now, I should have boosted into it. It's a big misplay for me. I could have lived right there. It's just, like, literally, my play in this game is terrible. It's really, really bad. But, uh, yeah. Dahaka. You pick him as a bruiser. And the unique thing that he brings is the global presence. So you want global presence on your bruiser. Really strong on, on... I think it could be really strong on this map. I think it'd be really strong on Dragonshire, Sky Temple. Maybe even Cursed Hollows. So, you know, something like that. All those sort of maps it's going to be good at. Uh, but it's important to pick him into that bruiser role against heroes that can't just kite him easily. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, this dude is like, thanks for the free loose hammer. Honestly, mate, it's like the hammer pick was good. Is it a hacker pick that fucked us over? And seriously, like, Oriole, Hammer, all of our, every single one of the other heroes are heroes that rely on having a pretty strong front line. If we'd had a good front line hero, like, if we had a Murden instead of a hacker, this game would have gone so differently. Instead, we just got run over. But, uh, for example, if you watch my Thrall game, you're going to see the exact same experience from... The Thrall's perspective, I'm playing the Thrall on that one. Instead of a Dahaka, we've got a Leoric in that sort of situation. Again, another hero that sort of excels in um, excels in that bruiser role. That they're not great unless very, very, very niche situations. They're not good at that main tank role. You're going to run them as a bruiser or within like with double bruiser or something like that. Like You need a strong frontline for it to work. Uh, and you're going to see the exact same thing. That I'm trying to play Thrall in that game. And it's so difficult to actually make it work as Thrall because we don't have a strong front line. So yeah, I just thought it was very funny. Like this guy, was, he's flaming me for picking the hero. And then he was the one that threw the game. I wouldn't say actually he was the one that threw the game, but he certainly had a bad pick that made things difficult. Um, we probably would have lost the game anyway because I was playing so, so terribly. But if we'd had a good, uh, if he hadn't tilted me at the start, I, I, you know, to be fair, I think it was like I, I had a Toronto vulnerability on me, on my anger. I think anything that had gone wrong would have tilted me. So I think, to be fair, I think I would have been tilted and played awfully no matter what happened. But certainly he kind of activated that earlier than it should have been activated. Um, and uh, yeah, but at the same time as well, the enemy team also played excellently. And that was a, 
yeah, I think those things kind of combined. I think he was tilted as well. Myself and Dehaka were both tilted. We both played badly. Uh, he had a bad pick. I don't think my pick was bad. Um, and uh, yeah, then because of his pick mostly, we had a pretty rough team composition. We had a tough time fighting it. I'm not sure if maybe my pick wasn't the best into the uh, Tastar Tracer, but if someone can let me know, like any ranged damage dealer that is, I'm kind of curious to get a few people's thoughts on that. Uh, I kind of think there's not too much you can do, actually. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in this particular video. Let me just wrap up and, and go over some of those thoughts again to make sure that they're properly formulated, because I know this one's probably pretty controversial. Um, but yeah, you've got the whole main tank, sub tank uh, idea, and it's very important, especially at top level like this, to have a, a main tank that that functions to have something that can control the team fight that can initiate that can engage that can zone off that can pressure the enemy back line the hacker just doesn't bring that as a main tank leoric as well as we've seen in several of these uh games as well it's it's baffling the drafting in these placement games honestly but they cannot do it um in pro play at the moment uh, let's just take the korean scene for example which is the best scene um meridian uh Tyrael, etc uh, are like the top three nearly every game uh you also see johanna as well uh, being picked up now uh even arthas sometimes but for the most part you know murder and Tyrael are nearly always kind of traded uh and there you go sometimes you see that you can run the Tyrael as a, a sub tank as well so some team will pick something like murder and Tyrael or etc Tyrael. then the other team if they've banned out the other thing they'll go for johanna sometimes they just pick johanna but you get the idea of like this very very uh um self-survivable uh, hero that brings a lot of crowd control and can initiate the fight. That's that's what you're looking for in the main tank. Then you've got the Bruiser or uh, Melee Assassin or a second warrior even sometimes. Um, we can even flex it out and just run a double support or something like that too. That's also possible. Um, but uh, yeah, generally speaking, you're going to be running like a Bruiser or Melee war uh, Melee Assassin. You know, something like a Sonya. Uh, Greymane has also been running this role though. He has been nerfed recently, so he's not as uh, prominent. Um, Thrall, very dominant in this position. You also have something like a Zeratul, uh, Kerrigan, Illidan, anything like that. You kind of get the rough idea. Uh, you could run Arthas as a bruiser, Sony as a bruiser. Uh, Rexar might even fit into. Um, that's the rough sort of idea. Tyrael as well, very dominant at the moment too. Uh, then ranged uh, damage dealer, you know, Li Ming, uh, Greymane would have been there before. Vala at the moment is considered to be quite strong. Uh, all that sort of stuff. Falstad is pretty decent. Um, and then his main support, main healer, and uh, then a flex player, uh, dipping into specialists or second support or something like that. And again, that's that's the sort of generic team comp. It's not the only team comp, but it's the generic one. It's the one you're kind of roughly looking at. And if you're deviating from it, you have to have a very specific reason why you are and for it to, to fit well into what the enemy team is doing. I don't think picking Dahaka into Li Ming and Tracer and Tassadar is a reason to deviate from the main tank thing. And it also gave the enemy team Muradin, which worked very, very well for them. And it, it was an unfortunate game, this one, a very unfortunate game. And I was certainly raging like mad when I was playing it. I was so mad. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's also the other topic as well, which is be careful of your mindset. You can see if you go in with a negative mindset, it's going to be like this. You're just going to be raging. You're going to play awful. You're going to play awful. And you're just going to lose games and be really frustrated and angry. Um, I probably should have just said, you know what? No, no rank video today. Uh, I'll do something else. I probably should have done that because it was a, it was a disaster. It really was. Um, uh, yeah, I just went into it. I felt the pressure to have to get a rank video up. And I went and played ranked when I really shouldn't have. And this is the exact sort of thing that you're going to see. It's what I was talking about in my, tilting, uh, my video on tilting. Uh, that was a completely tilted game. Um, and yeah, like I can tell you, like now on the outside, the day after watching this, I'm like, eh, what he was saying and stuff. It's annoying, but it's not that bad. But at the time, I was just absolutely raging. Um, it's like I said, it was like there's a Tyrande vulnerability. There's a Hunter's Mark on my anger. And these little stupid things that normally annoy me, but I could deal with. And it's just like, oh, for God's sake, whatever. Uh, those really stupid things just really get under my skin and just drove me nuts. And I was just like, dude, oh my God. It's like, just, just go, go fuck yourself, basically. That's the other thing as well then here for this particular game was, um, yeah, how do you deal with someone who's being annoying or being a jerk? Um, I think sometimes, you know, just ignoring them is fine. I think as well, though, there's, there's nothing wrong as well with just if someone's like, fuck you, dude. There's nothing wrong with turning around being like, well, fuck you too, mate. <laughs> like, just go fuck yourself back. Um, and that's what I do. 
Um, I'm like, if someone starts being really, really toxic and they just, you know, they don't redeem themselves or they don't, you know, apologize or mitigate it in some way, if they're just pure toxic for a game, I'll just be twice as toxic to them. And that's my attitude. And as you guys have seen from my streams, from my I mean, gameplay videos, almost never happens, almost never have to be like that. Very, very rarely. Um, but sometimes it's just called for. I was angry recording this video, so maybe I was a bit harsh. I, I don't think I was that harsh, though. But, um, yeah, I, especially if someone is, is being really nasty to your friend as well. Like, especially when you're playing with a friend, you know, you need to support your friend or something like that. Or if they're, even if it's not a friend, if it's a teammate. Like, it happened in another game uh, recently as well, where, like, this Zeratul was raging at one of our teammates, our Lili. Uh, he's like, dude, uh, why didn't you pick the heal talent? Why didn't you pick the heal talent? He's being really nasty to this Lili, just like, constantly harassing him throughout the game. After about five minutes of this, I was like, dude, just shut the fuck up. And he's like, well, Lili needs to bring the heals. Like, dude. You got the lowest hero damage. Like, lili has got more hero damage than you. You're playing shit, so shut up. Just, like, shut up. Stop complaining. Go complain somewhere else. He's like, is it your friend? I was like, no, he's not my friend. You're just being annoying. You're being an asshole. You're not playing well enough to justify you complaining here. Um, like, quite possibly, looking at the stats and looking at how you're playing, the problem is you, not the Lili. So just go away and bother someone else another time. Um, I think it's important to do that. You know, sometimes that is called for. Um, if you're always just ignoring it and quote unquote being the bigger man or whatever, you're going to um, you're going to let people get hurt and stuff like that. There's sometimes where you just have to fight back a bit. I don't know that's what I think on that though. I know that's pretty controversial. I'm curious to see what people think. Uh, anything else I needed to cover in this video? Oh yeah, if anyone knows if if that was the Smurf of like uh, Fury or the European Smurf for Fury, the pro player, I'd be curious to know. He's in a couple of the other videos as well. That's our couple of those other dudes. So I'm kind of I'm interested to hear. But uh, yeah, and then also shout out to the Meow Axe dude. He got a ton of votes right there. He played awesome. He's going to be in one of the other videos as well. And uh, yeah, it's cool. Always nice to meet a big fan, even if they do kick your ass <laughs> in the game. <laughs> there you go, guys. Anyway, I'll be back next time. Um, I've played the other four placement games. And I can assure you that I don't play awful in those. Um, I'm not going to tell you if we win or we lose, right? I'm not going to spoil that. But what I can say... Uh, and we don't win them all. I'll, I'll say that, right? We don't win them all. So there's... I want to leave a bit of tension right there, right? But, um, yeah, uh, I do play pretty well in most of them. Certainly there's some mistakes, but much better. I played them all yesterday, too. What I did was I played this game. I was just miserable. I was so angry and pissed off. I took a bit of a break. Then we did our stream because I had the stream scheduled. And then after the stream, I kind of cheered up quite a lot. So I went back and I played the ranked games then. And uh, yeah, cool. I just busted through them all, finished the placement games. So do look forward to those. They should be out over the next few days on the channel. And there will be a better gameplay. <laughs> this this game was it's one of the worst games I've ever I've played in a long, long time. It was really, 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 really bad. Uh, at least there is another Sergeant Hammer game up uh, from Ranked 2 that shows how to actually play her well and not play awfully. But anyway, lots of, I think there were lots of interesting thoughts in this video. I know this is probably a really long outro. Um, I just, there are so many things I want to talk about in this video. I hope I explain them and kind of cover them well. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, I'm expecting a lot of dislikes and probably a lot of people to disagree on, on some of these various points. But I'm curious to see what everyone thinks. And these are my thoughts on it anyway. I will see you all next time for more Heroes of the Storm. Give a like as well if you did like it and you want to balance out the dislikes. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.